Blog Talk Radio. Hello and welcome to an August 22, 2009 segment from the Kentucky Water Fuel Museum. Our guest tonight is Jacob Wall, who is a postgraduate student from the University of Idaho. And Jacob, are you with us? Let's see if we don't have Jacob on the line with us now. Hello, Jake. Yeah, I'm here. Well, welcome to the program. We've had occasion to meet at a couple of uh, events, one in Florida, I believe, and one in Maryland. Yeah, that's correct. I think we met at Spody's uh, Show and Tell conference in Ruskin, Florida, last fall, right? Right. And it was there that you gave a uh, slide presentation or PowerPoint presentation? Yeah, that's right. Now, the reason why you stood up and, and showed everyone in attendance there your work is that it has to do with the use of hydrogen and oxygen uh, from water as a uh, supplementary fuel, correct? Yeah, that's correct. Now, I think you may have made history by doing what you did. It's possible that someone in the past has made such the subject of their postgraduate studies, but you're the first one that I know of who has actually gone public with the results of such uh, research. Well, the um, this actually was not my actual thesis work. It was kind of a side project. My, um, you know, my primary research was on biodiesel. That's what I was getting, you know, getting paid for to do my thesis. But the hydrogen, you know, I've had a strong interest in this, you know, probably since 2003. And so, you know, over several classes, I been working on this paper, you know, for a combustion class and a uh, internal combustion engine class. And so this paper is basically, you know, the the summary of basically the, the technical journals that have been published. You know, I basically reviewed those and then um, the different, basically the different methods for uh, using hydrogen as a combustion aid and also um, uh, the effects, you know, if you were to use electrolysis. Okay. Now, this is in association with what university? Uh, I did the work when I was at the University of Idaho, and I, I just finished my uh, my master's thesis actually today. So. Really? Yeah. Well, this is a very appropriate occasion then. Yeah. <laughs> so basically, you know, this wasn't my official work, but, you know, I had a stronger interest in doing this than my you know, other work. So <laughs> I did this, you know, every chance I could get. Well, and it makes you wonder, too, um, because when you choose a thesis, it has to be approved, doesn't it? Well, the thesis basically, and that's what makes it, you know, maybe people should understand is basically the thesis work that's done is what the university has funding for. So, for example, like my project was uh, purification of biodiesel, that was my thesis, and that was because, uh, you know, a company who made products to purify biodiesel, you know, they wanted to do a, a study on it. And so that's, you know, that's where I got my thesis. You, basically, the the de particular department you're in, they, um, you know, they get grants and different things to do different researches. Otherwise, you know, the the research isn't just, you know, what you want to do necessarily. Yeah, so it has to be approved. Basic, yeah, yeah. Okay, so it, it's quite possible that uh, there would be no backing for the subject that most interested you. Could be, yeah. I I hadn't really, you know, when I originally I had wanted to do something with this when I was an undergraduate. I wanted to do a, my senior project. I wanted to do for you know replicating one of Stan Myers. Um, patents, but that was too probably too complicated for the the scope of the project. So I ended up doing something else. And then you know I knew that I knew how the system works, so I wanted to get into some kind of alternative energy biofuels type thing. So the University of Idaho has a big program for biodiesel, and so that's what I decided to do. And then I basically just knew that I would have to do the research, you know. The hydrogen research on my own. Yeah, exactly. Which again, this is um, really quite a shame because uh, 
For instance, uh, the PDF file uh, that you sent me today is the uh, analysis by a, a college professor. I guess it's UC Davis. Is yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I'm sorry, I don't have that in front of me right now. Yeah, he was UC Davis. I think his name was Eric. Last name was Erickson, Professor Erickson, and that he, you know, I, I don't know if he's the head, but basically he's. You know, he's in the hydrogen production um, department, so to speak, for that program. As it relates so, to aerospace and so on, correct? It, I, I think overall it's just the mechanical engineering slash aerospace um, degree program. So I think they do, you know, both mechanical engineering and... But in other know, words, aerospace. he's a hydrogen expert. Yeah, basically, yeah. And... In this two-page paper, which I, I suppose we could uh, – is that viewable online? Can we post a link to that? Yeah. Um, it's not that it's all that significant, but for a college professor to even comment on under-the-hood production of hydrogen fuel and the plausibility of using it as a primary source of fuel or as even a supplement, I mean, it is something that all of us who are interested in this technology, we do want to know what the powers that be, if you want to call them that, of academia, what they're saying about it. I do think he was, you know, I, I have to think back about exactly what it said, but I don't think he was absolutely negative. You know, he was negative about using, you know, water fuel as a standalone, but he was somewhat positive about doing boosting, but he was a little bit, you know, conservative about, how much hydrogen you actually need to make a difference. Yeah, but the point is this, that here he's, a, he's an expert on this uh, subject of, of uh, you know, this gas, right. this uh, all, all prevalent gas that makes up most of the universe, and yet uh, he really doesn't know. He says, you know, I really don't know about this. This isn't something I – he says, this is why we do research. Well, isn't it funny that research has not been done? Uh, yeah. This technology has been around for over 100 years, and yes, this is why we do research, but how come there's so little of it to resort to, to uh, as a precedent to say, well, here, you know, here's the evidence of what can be done. Well, what I've found basically is that, um, you know, at, at my university in particular, you know, when I talk about this stuff, people are generally open, you know, they they don't shut the door on you. And my the head of my department, I was trying to apply for a grant for you know doing some experimentation with this stuff. I didn't end up getting it, but he was supportive and he was willing to give a thousand dollars to support my you know my my research on this. So sure. you know I want to give a plug to you know at least my particular department at the University of Idaho and the people I've talked to about it. They're positive. They just don't know anything about it. Yeah, but that's that's the shame. Is that. Uh this far down the lane, or down the line, uh, in terms of technology, fuel technology, and so on, that we know so little about something that uh, really goes back to the year 1800 is when electrolysis was first done, and right. it wasn't long after that that it was applied to a fuel for a vehicle. In fact, the first internal combustion engine car used hydrogen from water as a fuel. So. Right. Uh, why is it that 200 years later we're scratching our heads saying, well, you know, uh, we need to research this? Mm -hmm. and, and so that's why I'm commending you for having done this uh, and being able to actually stand up in front of a crowd of people and, and give a presentation on the evidence that uh, this stuff really does work. Right. And the fact that well, we should be having to defend it, you know, in the face of opposition, is just ridiculous. Yeah. You know, and I know I've seen some of the posts that, you know, on the f different forums, and, you know, a lot of people can be, you know, fairly negative, and I'm not sure, you know, different YouTube people, you know, I don't remember the particular, there's one guy in particular who's just, he's almost vehemently opposed to the whole thing. And, you know, I don't really understand that. I mean, if you, if you don't want to research it, don't, but... You know why you have to dog everybody who is, but um, well, there's been some, know, 